here. I am the principal technologist with Meriplex. And I'm David Turner, the technical program manager over our SD WAN products here at Meriplex. We're going to be talking to you a little bit today about extending your VeloCloud SD WAN network into the Azure Cloud. So we essentially have four integration options that we're going to cover today into Azure. The first integration option is going to be creating an IPsec tunnel um, through the VeloCloud Edge device, the VC VCE. Um, the second option we're going to talk about is creating an, an IPsec tunnel through the VeloCloud gateways or the VCGs. Um, the third option we're going to be talking about is uh, creating a virtual edge in the VeloCloud uh, with the VeloCloud uh, uh, SD-WAN architecture into the Azure cloud environment. And then the fourth option I'm going to be talking about is a uh, using the direct connect option through the partner gateway environment. As Robert said, the, the first option is an IPsec tunnel through the, the VeloCloud edge itself. So some of the benefits here, that's it's quick to turn up so we can turn these up quickly. We're actually, what we're doing is we're actually building an IPsec tunnel from the edge, from the remote sites, to the, the Azure environment through the extended virtual LAN. And what, you know, some of the benefits to this is that, you know, you don't have to back all your traffic through a, a gateway. Um, you don't have to back all your traffic through your data center, through another IPsec tunnel. You can build that that tunnel directly from the edge itself. And the downside is that when you know you're not able to take advantage of any of the uh, Velo Cloud DMPO technology when you're built, you know, when you're traversing that IPsec tunnel. So your traffic going to the internet and going to other sites will have full advantage of the DMPO. However, your traffic that's going to Azure is just going to go through a typical uh, IPsec tunnel. So we have on here. We aggregate bandwidth at the edge, that is true, but to the internet, not necessarily to, to the Azure side there. The next option is, is an IPsec tunnel through the Velo Cloud Gateway. So besides, you know, we, we can turn this up quickly just like the first option. One of the things we get here is that we get uh, DMPOs, we get quality of service through the DMPO to the Velo Cloud Gateways themselves. From the Velo Cloud Gateways, we actually build uh, IPsec tunnels to Azure. Now, typically our VeloCloud gateways are located in the same data centers as Azure. So the, the IPsec tunnel is not traversing um, the long haul across the internet in, in most cases there. We get visibility to, to Azure traffic to the VeloCloud gateway. Um, we can actually aggregate bandwidth from the remote site to the gateway, and then, uh, and then that traffic will traverse through the IPsec tunnel. And we can also do primary uh, tunnels and redundant tunnels as well, so it will fail over the scenario. Another option that, that we deploy a lot of is, is a VeloCloud uh, vEdge in, in the Azure environment itself. So we actually have a script to, um, that we utilize um, to, to deploy these rapidly. And it, it basically builds out, uh, you know, all the the VPCs and all the VNets and stuff. So we can really deploy these really quickly. Some of the benefits to this is that you know we get we get uh, full DMPO quality of service all the way from the remote sites all the way to Azure. So we don't have to send that traffic through the VCG. We don't have to back all that traffic anywhere else. There's a full mesh topology that we can uh, leverage from all the remote sites directly to your to your Azure environment. We can actually aggregate bandwidth all the way. To, to Azure itself. Um, we can do HA as well, so we can do a, a HA and edge in, um, in Azure. And then another option is that we get full segmentation support. So, you know, for PCI compliance or if you need, you know, your traffic uh, segmented completely across, we can actually segment that traffic from the remote site to Azure and drop it off in a different VPCs, uh, different VNets, whatnot. Um, so that's a real, real benefit to this option. Yeah, and to that point, David, I mean, it, it, these are the reasons why this is our most popular deployment model because the the, the Azure environment, uh, uh, um, as David mentioned, uh, becomes a, another spoke off the network, and it looks just like another data center where your applications and workloads are sitting at. So very, very popular from our perspective. Correct, and we can control the business policies, um, ingress and egress in, in Azure in this scenario too. So if we wanted to you know, create a business policy, so prioritize traffic or deprioritize traffic uh, for certain applications, we can do that you know, throughout the whole SDN network, including the entrance into Azure. So, mm -hmm. 
The last option, which we're seeing more and more of, is it's uh, similar to the second option we had. It's based, but it's a direct connect through a partner gateway. So the traffic from your remote site would still, you know, traverse the BCG. But instead of an IPsec tunnel to, to the Azure environment, we would have a direct connection um, through a megaport or, or, or whatnot. And um, so some of the benefits to that is we still have the quality service, you know, all the way to, to, to Azure through the DMPO through the gateways. But then we have a, a dedic you know, dedicated bandwidth to Azure through that direct connect. So we're seeing more and more of this um, as well. Awesome, David. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Um, visit us at www.mariplux.com uh, or find us on LinkedIn. Um, or you can also email us at connect.mariplux.com. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks.